bring the meeting to order. First of all, I'd like to say that's the first time in over a year I've been able to use that. So um, it was a pleasure to be sitting here with all this uh, great company doing this in person for a change. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda as presented? I have a few. Uh, we have the lease for 188 Lower Main East, uh, the Holcomb House Apartments okay. or apartment. Uh, we have, uh, we've also received the NEMS contracts. Okay. Uh, for the next financial year. And uh, I believe the Racial Justice Committee was going to ask for uh, consolidation under the town, which was going to require a, a vote. Yeah. I figured we put that right in there, report time. Yeah. Um, did I also see a contract for Roger? Is that so that's in the, the okay. So that's there as well as yeah. okay. Any other items? Um, curbside alcohol sales. Thank you. That's not covered. I don't know if you're going to talk about and then state of emergency or if it's just fine. Anyone else? Um, it's been brought to my attention that a worker at the public office has purchased a coffee machine and coffee, and I just wonder what the deal is with that. Okay, we'll bring that up. Providing something like that. Under Rosemary's okay. Could you speak up a little louder, please? Certainly. Oh. <laughs> um, I do want to think about, um, maybe we could add a planning session for our projects. Do a what? A planning session. Oh, planning. We can talk about planning session. Priorities. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> no, and uh, sorry, one more. We should discuss uh, the July 5th meeting. Uh, yes. And I think we'll talk about that because Rosemary's going to have two meetings, probably. So we need to talk about the July 5th. Yeah. Okay. So, couple of that in. Any other items? Oh, a good start here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The board prepared to approve the meeting minutes for June 7th. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Good. Rosemary, you get the floor. So we're now mid June. Are we going to be getting closer to the hundred percent mark? Yes. On the set orders, there's a two hundred twenty-three thousand, two hundred twenty-three thousand that goes into the capital system fund, which is in the budget. Mm -hmm. And that'll put still put us at like ninety percent. Mm -hmm. And typically, even though our budget year ends June thirtieth, by the time Rosemary's done reconciling all of the uh, bills and invoices, in July it would be. End of July, mid August, before we know what the, the final number is. Okay. And the taxes now, the total tax for last year is $104,991. The two major um, taxpayers pay. So about 
20,000 less from the previous two years. Good. And I've had two requests for waiver um, um, interest and penalties. One from Barry Stone, he owns the Dallas General Store. Um, he's from France. He stated he did not give his bill in August because he was in France. As soon as he found out about the bill, he paid the taxes. Okay. He has holidays in France, right? He didn't live in France. So he's been there since first part of last year. Because of the COVID or something like that. I believe last year we did waive penalties and mm -hmm. uh, interest because of the COVID and people's ability to pay. However, typically we never did waive because it's very well publicized that taxes are due in this office uh, by the end of the day, four o'clock on the due date and postmarks did not count. And this is, uh, it's actually something that the voters determined and it's not a policy to select. But this, it is within this board power to again waive any uh, late fees or interest. You seem very truthful when I was talking to him. Very well. I have truthful. It's truthful. Like he was sure. making up stories. So I'll put it before the board. Uh, no motion, we would basically be denying it. Uh, but I would look for a motion to approve it if that's the wishes of the board. Approve the request. Whole request or part thereof. Now, which one of these two are we taking up? We're only doing it very slowly right now, which is the dollars in general. So they're both dollars. Right? What is the second one? I thought he had something. It's two parcels. <clears throat> that one is two parcels. So, for context, I think in the past the board has. Not been very lean, is that correct? Yes. Over the years, I think. Uh, you know, I think last year, maybe the year before, it must have been the year before. So we mailed a check on time, it didn't arrive on time anymore. So we didn't get it. Uh, so, changing the testing. So, this one is COVID related, arguably. We should know what his tax code would be. When did he talk to the last time? Last time was the first. So, what's board pleasure? I'm hearing a motion. Take it as being denied. The next one. I see emails, his checks. Comments? Entertain a motion. Here we go. Motion. As soon as we have the right.
um, we will need to set the tax rates. Uh, I told uh, Y6, so seven counts are now. And this sort of wraps in with Brian. Uh, typically, we try if we're able to limit the number of meetings in July, not have a work session, just to give everybody that opportunity to enjoy the summer. Uh, with that said, we do have to meet to rec Rosemary's recommendation on July 6th to set the tax rate. And Rosemary and I agreed on a BCA meeting for July 13th for the bill of uh, assessment. So we will still have some meetings, but if it's within the board's pleasure to not have a work session, we would skip the fifth, which is actually a uh, designated holiday for July 4th. Except the tax rate on July 6th, which will be very, very short. And then July 13th would be a full PCA meeting. And then we would have our regular meeting on whatever the 21st or something like that. Uh, yes. 19th. 19th. Yeah, thank you. So, is there any uh, board members who have concerns or issues with those dates? 13th is BCA. Yep. And that was the reason Rosemary and I selected the July 13th date because it had to be done within a certain window. This puts it out at the end. So in case there's someone else that uh, appeals their assessment, we can do them at the same time. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks, Rosemary. Thank you. Uh, facial justice. Here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I want to, you know, it did me happy to be here with all the people. So, I want to thank you all for that, especially, you know, that our and most people in the church took the pandemic seriously, and all of these efforts like to benefit health wise and financially because of the professional that we were in charge of. Thank you very much for that. Um, with regards to the racial justice committee, we had a special meeting on last well, May. So, oh, yeah, and then we had another meeting since I don't know if that's okay. Um, uh, so, we did. Uh, Start a writing contest where we got you got provided with two hundred bucks and get two dollars funding from the Lamar Story Center. We publicized that, put it out on the homeschool network to the schools. Um, when the summer school programs start up again, we'll put it back out again. The deadline is that's August first, but that seems to have been pretty well received by people, and uh, I think we'll have uh, a lot of entries and some publicity around that. But it's day on that. Um, another thing we talked about is is uh, once again, I feel like I think so. I urge you guys to update the website, town documents, flyers, messaging with the anti racism statement and the inclusivity statement. We've been talking about this since December, right? And I believe there was there was action taking place to update the website. Did you contact with someone to do that? Or? The, it should, both should be appearing on the website. Uh, if they're not, uh, we'll, we'll have, uh, I'll circle back with our, our website administrator and make sure that they, they are. Right. Uh, and but, there's also, you know, on the website, there's there's a couple of lovely PDFs, one for potential tourists if people want to visit. It can be on that. And also there's a PDF with kind of an outreach to people who want to start a business here, uh, talking about, which is talk about the, the financial incentives for minority businesses, as well as the, the grant from the England, you know, uh, Grace Kaposky was part of getting this. We're an opportunity zone. We got some money for that. Uh, we didn't get funding for the opportunity zone. We got, uh, but that did help us. We're part of the working communities challenge. Right, right. Thank you. Yeah. Didn't have the money for it, but 
but these things seem to be not front and center on the internet for people, right? If someone's thinking about moving to Vermont or visiting or going on a vacation or starting a business here, their first contact with us to be on the internet, right? That's how everyone's gonna find all our information. These critical pieces about our town, about what we stand for, are not easily accessible by people who are Google searching for jobs in Vermont, and they really should be, right? Um, because that's part of the public messaging that we're supposed to do. And it's not only principled and part of what the government do, it's, it's good business, right? And um, we need to be better with marketing what our town stands for. And you can see it around the state right now. I mean, people are buying homes like crazy. So I think I saw a VT Bigger article that the town of Stowe in the last year sold 153 residential homes. Don't just hold two. Um, and you know, so it's a lot different, of course. But if you look around the map, there's a lot of other towns that seem to have a better online presence, is probably not incidental to the sales of out of state homes, out of state tourism. And so I really would encourage us to upgrade on that point, both on the racial justice messaging, anti racist and inclusivity, and just in general, what our town looks like and stands for and should be something we are proud of and should be on the internet and easy to find. Um, uh, so you're probably familiar that in the last uh, Village Trustees meeting, there was a motion regarding the Racial Justice Committee, and I have their minutes here. Uh, moved and seconded to allow the Racial Justice Committee to become a town committee rather than a joint town village committee pending the town's acceptance. I think. We'll talk to you about this right yes. here. Yep. And, and the idea being that, you know, when we went to them for funding for the essay contest, they were like, well, no, we don't want this double taxation. We don't need to get into that detail, but if they think it is, then it's a thing. Um, and also that representation from the town comes from everybody in the town, but the village is just the village. And we, the racial discipline is not even a year old and we've already lost four members, three of whom were from the village. Uh, and when we first, Asked for applicants from the town, there were 11 or 12 people from the town that applied. So I think the need to filling up the committee and making sure that financial and uh, democratic representation is equal, this should be the town committee. Um, I know people were concerned that the village was kind of passing this off, and I assure everyone that the trustees haven't heard the last from the racial justice committee that if there are issues that pertain to them as far as their you know, hiring presses or property, that we'll, we'll be sure to be there making contact with them and make recommendations. But this just seems like a pretty smooth step and would make it easier in a lot of ways. Um, that's my, my particular opinion. I think it's a lot of different views, but I'm happy to answer questions about it. Um, do you want to talk about that or go down, go down my list before? We're... I think we probably, as a board, should take action or not take action on that particular issue. Uh, I think when, when it, sort of what Eric referred to when the Racial Justice Committee was formed, it was a joint effort uh, between the town and the village, and it was for good reasons. Uh, we felt that that was a good mix. Uh, a lot of the things that would probably would be done would be more uh, village centric than, than outside the town. Um, but I can see where there are problems with a joint committee. And, uh, it's not unprecedented for uh, the planning commission, for example, is a town planning commission. However, the village adopts it, and but we manage it, we appoint the members, we do all of that. So it, it's not totally unprecedented. There are two things on that way, but great. I, I think that one member is Raven from the village, is that right? Correct. And there are no other village members currently. Dan Lavillier resigned, Rakopoli resigned. And I think really um, smoothed away a while ago. Raven's quite active, quite. I mean, it seems to me she's quite a good um, participant. I would, um, I would kind of hope we would uh, point her at this point. Does that does that sound make sense to you? Oh well, I was thinking that the members, the current four members of the racial justice committee, are still on the racial justice committee, and that okay. you guys, if you passed this motion or accepted what the trustees proposed, would simply. As, the other two spots. as it's composed now, yeah, accepting right, that's why. Does yeah, that make yeah, sense? Yeah, they didn't the Oh, I understand, but the village, the village the appointing, we haven't, uh, we haven't appointed her. I guess we would have to officially uh, it's adopt welcome. that appointment from the village, and then uh, 
We put out openings for two positions. Okay, so I'll move that the town um, select board approves the villages withdrawal from the racial justice committee. And adopt any appointed members serve and adopt the Raven as the current village appointee. Um, appointee. Got motion is second on the floor. Is there any discussion? Eric, uh, was there some talk about the mix, uh, or are you just going to let it go? Whoever puts forth their name can be on it, or do you did you have some kind of percentage that you wanted village re representation? I think, or just take whatever people come forward. I think Eric's precedent of the planning commission's fine. I mean, anyone, anyone in the town who wants to be on the committee, or even if you're not on the committee, you can join the meetings. I don't think there's a limiting who could be appointed would be the problem. This would not limit it. Seems to be different. Was there some discussion in your racial justice I, meeting about that? We didn't. The racial justice meeting didn't. Can you talk about this? Um, we talked about it. Um, prior to this decision at the trustee meeting, and um, it, there wasn't really a consensus about it, about this decision, because we didn't know it was going to move so quickly in the trustee meeting. Um, so I don't know if if you want to give the Racial Justice Committee a chance to talk it over before you make the decision, or if you want to just make the decision tonight about um, the... I, I guess I prefer just make it tonight. And... Okay. And typically, when we post for committee positions, we do not ask, are you a village resident or are you a town resident? They're a Johnson resident. Yeah. And I think probably this board would make appointments in the same fashion the racial justice, just like we do any other community. I mean, I, I made the motion based on the understanding that you were recommending that to us. Um, if you're still recommending that to us, then it's still the motion. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. And, that's, that's all we have. If you want to do it another time, we can do it another time. I just, from my perspective, if the village doesn't want to play, then we can't force them. The village does. They made they made this motion at their last meeting. If they don't want to be, um, I see. Yes. Have but made appointments to the racial justice committee. Pending your approval, force them to. So, so that's why. I, yeah. Okay. Well, let's just. So we have the motion and the second. Uh, so the town take over the committee. Yes. I just have one question. Just a clarifying question. Um, when you said the planning commission, they wait, the, is the planning commission mm -hmm. as town adopted by the village. So, what does that mean? The, by statute, the village has to have a planning commission, but they were struggling uh, finding membership. And okay. so, they simply adopted the town planning commission as their own. Okay. So, our planning commission, the town appointed planning commission, serves the village as well when there's reasons, you know, to do their village plan or what have you. Okay. Basically, they do work for both boards, yeah. essentially. They just do work for both boards, and this board is the governing board if they have conflicts or priority issues right here. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, is there any further board member comments? Um, so you have two, one open seat or two open seats? Two. Did you have that part of the motion to post the open? No, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Is there anything from pieces or anything from the public? Mm -hmm. Board ready to vote? All those in favor, send for saying aye. 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 Those both. Okay, and uh, I would suggest, Brian, we go ahead and post those two more meetings. And then just, uh, um, we got that one. And, you know, I, I spoke at the last meeting about, you know, wanting to find things that we should just we do that we can have everybody get behind rather than making you know, us versus them back for that. And I don't know if any of you guys saw the Abuse the of Citizen article last week where Sophie and I were quoted at length. And I, I think that, you know, I hope that that's helping to change the tone along with some posts and conversation around town. And I would ask you all to, you know, I know everybody here represents the constituency, but also your, your leaders, right? And so I, I would hope that, you know, you know, no matter your you know political persuasion, that you realize like, you know, racism is a thing, and we have a committee that's gonna try to do something about it. What we do about it is up for debate, but the committee's a good thing. 
and we can have healthy discussions about how to address this. And I would hope that you guys can help take a leadership role. We're, we're trying to do that as well. And I think we're moving in the right direction. And I think you can look around the state and you can see towns that have anti-racism movements either by statute or by activists. And most of the people, you know, get behind some level of it and it's fine. And then we have other communities that are just ripping themselves apart over this with a lot of out-of-state influence and out-of-state political influence and a lot of national news media input that really has got nothing to do with our state. And so I'm trying to encourage everybody to get behind them. Like, this is a local thing. This is us talking to people in our community about how to fix these issues and just try to tamp down that, uh, you know, the outreach machine on this, which isn't really talking about what is going on here, but places in people's imagination far away. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that's all. Is there any other questions from you folks? Any questions? Go um, ahead. Yeah, Eric, I, pre I appreciate that. And I do, I do see this as a really good opportunity uh, to do some really good things in this community. So thanks for the work you're doing. I, I've been looking at your meeting minutes and, and following you, um, your work. Um, and I, I see um, the appointed committee members really have been making a point to try and uh, uh, change direction, as you as, as you said, and the newspaper article. I thought you both uh, did a really good job on that. Um, I did talk the last time you came before the board about um, a discussion regarding roles and responsibilities of community members, uh, of committee members, and of the chair. I'm hoping that you had that conversation. Um, I'll, I can ask about that later, but. Um, I see uh, the, I was reading the Hardwick Equ Equity Committee's meeting minutes. Um, and here's something that's said in them. Audrey, two members will work on a statement of shared agreement to clarify the committee's intention around providing a space for people to feel safe and to share without threat of retribution. Um, that's in their March meeting minutes. Um, I tried to follow up with them and I haven't heard back from them yet, but I expect I will just to, to hear kind of more about they create the statement is it but i really think I, I really like to see that that discussion happen with committee members um that portia did a really good job last meeting of, of saying um you know we can't we can't attempt to force people things on people or we'll push them further away we need to stand strong about what we believe and be very clear about that um but if we're constantly coming off as combative, we're not getting our point across and we're making a difference. And I, I thought she did a really good job of, of uh, making that point. And I just encourage you to continue on with that in terms of roles and responsibilities. I'm, I'm really, I'd like to see that before I personally would vote on future membership and future um, appointees, because I just really want it clear and black and white um, that this is, people need to buy into this as, as uh, that sort of message, so. Yeah, just briefly, we talked about that. And I think Sophia, as the chair, is doing a fantastic job monitoring the yeah. meetings. We talked about how when people are commenting, you, you, you speak to the chair, not to other individuals in the room generally, you know. And also that, um, you know, there's two kinds of folks in those meetings. So some, of them, some of them are political activists, and I, and I love those people. And they have a big fire and passion and knowledge to these conversations. But other of us have been appointed to a committee as part of a democracy, right? And so activists can be principled and, and say whatever they want to say. And then people like you folks have to vote and take a bunch of opinions into account. And I, I know I, I know what you're getting at me. And and, and I, you know, and I think members of the committee have the responsibility as a chair, a vice chair, and a member of the committee to be accepting and, and welcoming of, that, of you know all viewpoints and then distill that down into something you can make motions to and bring here. Um, but you know, folks in the community can, are going to come into those meetings and, and, and speak their minds. And sometimes it, you know, when you're talking about things like race and racism, people get hot. And we're trying to cool that down by making sure comments are directed to the chair and not to individuals, and that it's all about policy and not personal. I think we're in, in the right space on that. I do too. I, I just wanted to, to, and that is fun. Everybody's welcome to comment and share their perspectives. But and, and I think that. The appointed committee members are doing a good job of, of directing it in, in a positive production, productive direction. It's not about you know compromising or toning things down to make things milk toast for um, 
you know, for the, the dominant culture, it's, it's um, for moving together as a community and talking to each other instead of through each other. So that's what I'd really like to get across. And then I'll recognize you. That's okay. Um, I just wanted to, so what you said um, rang very true, that we should make sure that people who are putting themselves out there to join the committee really understand what their charge is in the committee. Um, so having that mission, so that expect, expectation is set before they even join the committee is really important. So thank you for that. Um, and I heard this thing on the radio this weekend that I really loved and I tried listening to it a second time, I couldn't find it, but anyway, they were talking about how if you were really going to make a difference in racial justice, um, the work you do has to be manageable, winnable, and actionable. Um, and I think that those are really important pieces. And for me, simplicity wins. Like we can take small chunks and just make a small, have a small chunk make a little difference. That really adds up quickly. So I think it's really important. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, a lot of the Matt said, is, I think at the last meeting, we were talking about our mission and our vision statement, which was made early on um, with Rick still as chair. And we didn't, I feel like at our last meeting, we were kind of like, hey, we should, we should look at this again and make sure we all are aware of what this is. And I love Portia's point, and um, I'm so glad that she spoke so clearly to what it meant for her. Um, and yeah, and so I think that is on the agenda for our next meeting, this revisiting the mission and the vision, making sure that it has language about what the charge is if you're on this committee. What is expected of you and what is expected of participants? Um, I think that that's, yeah, that's great. So that will be on the agenda. Thanks. In, in other racial um, justice, I'm sorry, <laughs> racial justice or racial equity groups that I've uh, participated in and am participating in, they start every meeting with some sort of statement like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not, you know, revisited every six months, but it's, it's out there. So thanks for letting me go on. Any further comment? Uh, thank you both for coming in tonight. Maybe we should circle back. There's a couple of items we were going to probably throw under grocery. One was uh, the curbside alcohol sale. And that's where we get into uh, the liquor control board, which is what the select board is for the town. Uh, and that reminded me there was a special provision in the emergency order of the governor that allowed this to happen, and we had to agree to it. But that has expired, but I believe we have the authority, if any of these businesses ask, to extend it or allow it from now on. Well, we approved it with with the with the stipulation that it ends when the state emerges. Okay, ends. so that permission is now ended. So we would have we should remind. And we believe there's only two that ask for that, correct? The, the hub and the uh, yeah. yeah, those are the only ones that I'm aware. Of. So we, I'm not sure who would take that on as a liquor control board message, but let them know that that did expire. And uh, if they still want to pursue that, they would need to get uh, the okay to this board. Is that correct? That's correct. Good job. Uh, the other thing was the coffee machine and purchased by an individual member in the office. We brought that up under your discussion as well. And Evan, you may have more details on that or, or Rosemary. Was that always, I never, Asked the question, never thought about it, uh, just assumed it was a town coffee machine and provided by the town. have always purchased the coffee pot. And is that with every department, like highway department, do they purchase their own coffee pot? It, I don't think the coffee, I don't they think don't that the them. highway currently has a working coffee pot, but the last one they've the ones they've had have been purchased by town employees. I haven't been fielding a lot of complaints. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I don't think the guys if drink coffee. So. If we were to decide as a board that we were going to support purchasing it, then it would set a precedent that any other department 
highway that would have their own cost. <laughs> so what's is the board want to take this action up? Or what's the plan there? This is more of a coffee pot, right? <laughs> I mean, coffee coffee pot, we're talking small appliances yeah. and And as long as I've been here, line. they're mostly hand-me-downs from people. This is a pretty nice new one. Um, it just seems like something simple that should be provided to employees. Blew my mind, but um, it's the board's decision. What did you say? I have a motion that we provide a coffee pot, the coffee to yeah. and village employees, I guess. <laughs> Let us sleep in dog life. They drink a lot of coffee. What about the village culpability? They just pass it back to us. But we do have a motion on the floor to, that we would uh, supply the town office. Where, uh, I would take that to the other town departments as well. Coffee maker. Coffee maker. Do we have a second? Sure, I'll second that. Do a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? I think we just need a little sleeping dog like we have never provided coffee makers in the past, and we should just let it go. Let's just vote on it. It's, 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 it's 20, 20 bucks. I mean, the, yeah, but the thing is, somebody could say, you, you didn't limit the price. I want a, a 15 cup bun coffee maker that costs. Or ten dollars, you don't know. If, if somebody wants coffee, they can bring their own coffee maker, in. and then they can maintain their own coffee machine and everything else. It's going to be a long day. We're just talking about. Just no, but I mean, look at it. I mean, there's, there's even a liability issue on this. If, if you make, if you get a coffee maker and you furnish it, and somebody burns their mouth on it, then the town is liable. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Heard the ayes. Thank you. <laughs> and that would go for the highway department as well. Okay. <laughs> and you? I've got the floor. How am I going to follow this? Yeah. What are you going to ask for? Popcorn? Unless a fun machine. Uh, okay, so we began to love uh, working up on Papa French Hill, and that whole mechanism was over there with dishing, um, grading, um, replaced several culverts through there. Did it really with no people complaining about road closures, so that was pretty good. Um, <clears throat> gave away a lot of fill. I didn't realize that fill was such a hot commodity in this town. But the minute they see you up there, you get 15 phone calls. So there's never a shortage of places to put it. Um, so we work up there. Uh, we've been great pretty much every day. Um, roads are in really good shape right now, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> we changed how we applied chloride this year. We graded and then laid down. That's part of it. That you won't be needing to apply much more. This year, we still let it up, but that holds up. We replace the first pool, sink the flooring, and then come and search front of the road. Controlling, I have to see things in place. We ended up creating the Town stump driveway. Um, I understand Brian and I kind of figured it wasn't really ours to worry about. Um, but I feel the more complaints about that driveway than 1,500 miles of roads. So I said 20 minutes of time. So, um, the new pickup team, it's now the OS actually the shop now that has volume on today. Uh, got a big 
project on River Road. We got called to the room. Basically, started to open up. Sorry, my name is Jeff Sussano. The hole started in 18 inches in diameter. That was about four feet deep. We stuck your head in the hole, thrown underneath the column, five feet wide, four or five feet deep. Caused by the drainage from the old sawmill. We spent two or three days and probably fifteen thousand dollars in materials to fix that issue. We are four more crossings just like it along that stretch that really are going to warrant some investigation because I can't imagine that they're any better when you're talking 40, 50 year old pipe and it's never there was never a catch basin structure. It's a bunch of old truck tire or uh, truck rims stacked on each other and that's just the way it was back then. So Brian and I kind of talked about who owns it. Is it us, the village, Manchester's? We're going to delve into that at some point, but it's, uh, I, it was basically my call to just go ahead and take care of it and then sort it out afterwards. So it's back in, we haven't repaved. Um, I'm just going to that crossing for now until we decide what our long term plan is for that stretch. Because we're going to have, worst case scenario, you're going to have. Three, four more crossings in that that don't really pay. So I'm just back for that for now. So, um, I assume we'll just put that on as an agenda item for another time. Getting into that. Yeah. No problem in having um, So, like I talked about before, we replaced the culverts on the French. We replaced a bunch on Swamp Road. Um, just Looking at lists of stuff that I had seen from my predecessor that had kind of been back burned. I feel like we can accomplish quite a bit if through. I don't know what we've done in the past, but coming from the private sector, I mean, it's go, go, go. We've got a short window of time each year to do it. So we'll continue to do that. Uh, we started mowing. Uh, and we'll talk about the rail trail. We did mow the rail trail only once. Um, Seven days a week that we're mowing right now. Our part timer comes in, does 20 hours on the weekends, and mows, and we're in pretty good shape there. It's a little bit earlier than last year, apparently. Um, Welcome Center, we've been working for hours and getting that going. I think it's a point where you can turn and do concrete. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, put the garbage cans back at Old North Park. And our two new trucks, we just looked at one of them at the body company. And uh, that should come next month. And the salt truck will be here in August. So, plan. So, basically, there was always an understanding between the town and village that the town owned the light to light, mm -hmm. basically, culverts. Uh, anything with storm drains, the village owned. As I understand with this particular case, the village does not recognize they own it. And what probably happened was Manchester, some number of, however, many years ago on their own, put their culverts in. And that's why neither the town nor the village recognize ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, how will that get resolved? It'll be a big question because you are already into it for 15 ish thousand dollars. If we got three or four more of these, it's a huge expense for the town. Uh, and I, the way I look at it is, if we'd have hired an outside contractor, that's about a thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars question. So, but it normally where it's going into some kind of a catch basin, that would be a village responsibility. Um, from what I understand, just because you know I'm getting the entirely biased opinion of the village guys, yeah, <laughs> is that. If it's a if it doesn't empty into their stormwater system and it daylights out in the river, all the time you got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that it's a town issue. I don't know. I mean, personally, I I, I, feel, I feel it's a Manchester. Um, you 
know, they're more than happy to discuss dealing with it. We had an open dialogue over there. Uh, I extended their <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, watch. People out in the Zoom world are wondering what is going on there. Um, he separated the new Kent Basin from their other system because it, it goes one further to the park and start to empty into this one. And separate that, put on a separate pipe and send it right, out, right now in the bank, um, trying to, for future purposes, try to keep things separate. But yeah, we're we're gonna have an issue if it's at minimum we need to spend the money to have you know those other ones inspected. See how we can do. I expect they're all the same age, so yeah. Mm -hmm. That's certainly a near future topic we're gonna take up. Uh, the other thing is be careful with what you uh for the solid waste district because mm -hmm. there is a contract between us and uh, they are responsible for maintaining the yard plowing grading what have you mm -hmm. i hope they appreciated your generosity you. i think the townspeople appreciated it <laughs> for the amount of phone calls that i got i got to the point where i'm like i just want to stop yeah. so but those phone calls should have been directed to the solid waste district. I pointed that to them. Yep. Okay. Uh, anyone got anything? Do you know how many hours it took to mow the rail track? Uh, we were on it two days. Two days. So 16. 16 hours. Thanks. And unfortunately, from what I was told, it's a day project because the arm mower is too large. So uh, okay. it adds a day of extra travel, just looping around all these bridges and crossing each old fit. Do you think you're spending more on chloride or just dispersing it differently throughout the season? Dispersing it differently. The trend that I've noticed on chloride is that it looks like we've been robbing from the next year's fiscal for dust control because I started out. Um, I look back and we could take 10 grand from the prior fiscal for chloride. Yep. And so that's an adjustment we need to make. Because when I do the math based on the mileage and the moderate rate that we're putting it down, it's a 36 to 38,000 per year expenditure, and our line is 20. So I think that just needs to be. Good budget year to. Budget time discussion. Any other comments? Just board members? Thank you. Public. A couple of meetings, I think I corrected you on how far the pavement went up over the off between Gibbsford, and I couldn't have been more wrong. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> the new surface looks great. I mean, the digit there is just it's 10 times better. It was so dug up, you couldn't even recognize it. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Chad. Okay, thank you, Hugh. Mm -hmm. So you're going to give a rep report? Sure. Um, I'll start with spring. We had baseball this year, which was very exciting, and um, worked with the Wild County Little League and working um, between the Wild County group. We were able to get all the kids from Waterville, even Belvedere, we'll get. Cambridge, here, Stowe, and Morrisville onto some team. Not every town was able to do full teams this year because we had reduced um, enrollment, but we were um, shifting them around so that all the kids who wanted to play could play. And um, we had a grant that was written by Heather before she left and to rebuild the softball fields. So those were rebuilt in the spring and played on. Um, and the coaches were down when we were building them and enjoyed them. And so you know, they had a great season on them. They are now all playing all stars. So Johnson has several softball and baseball players representing an all star team this year, which is very exciting. Um, working with Howard and Casey, continuing our work to learn about the skate park and the bike, bike park and camps down there and 
um, all the stuff that goes into keeping that going. I've um, been writing lots of grants. Casey um, Romero has been very generous in helping me learn, learn her process for writing grants. She's very effective at it. So and we've gotten several of those in. And doing that, we got uh, money for me to take up playground inspectors course, um, a new climbing structure at the Legion Field. And we're working right now with Eddie to try and double the money that's been donated for Leo's playground. Um, getting that submitted next month. And this summer we'll have community yoga, kickball, children's dance classes, a sports and stories for like little tiny kids to introduce them to sports and get their families interested in rec. Um, we're working with the library and the fire station to do more community stuff like one-off event stuff to get um, people who aren't in conventional sports still involved in community rec and good times. Um, Jan Uris is doing a three-week summer camp this year for kids down at Old Mill Park. And what's so awesome about that is summer camp for the kids, but that also brings in the whole teams and having them come down and they interview and they're going to get on the job training. And so it's reaching out to two sectors of the community. Um, and we decided at our last meeting, which was in person, that we're going to have a big yard sale down at Old Mill Park to raise money for REC. Just to, um, we're just trying to figure out ways to offset the fundraise all the time. So that seemed like a real easy use of the space. And we're working with the um, Conservation Commission, the hillside just below the um, pavilion because of the lack of rain, it's losing its grass and it's starting to slough off when we need that topsoil. So we're working with them to return that to like a meadow with walking paths through it. So that it's a uh, a better benefit to the environment and it's a more stable space. That's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Recruiting new members, <laughs> always inviting people in, <laughs> welcoming old members back. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any questions for Casey? Um, I'm curious, Lisa, about expenses for the year. Like some of the programs, basketball, you know, I'm very familiar with. Um, we didn't have programs, so what were expenses for some of those things? Some of the expenses came in after um, we did like some ball ordering stuff after the fact, because evolution balls were sold out during the season, so we tried to get them in advance of the next season. Mm -hmm. um, and then also uh, like some of the uniform pieces that were missing, that sort of stuff. Um, we went through an inventory when it was COVID, we went and reorganized and inventory everything in the storage closet. So went through all that. And then in reviewing the budget, I actually was just noticing a few things were in the wrong spot. So Rosemary and I adjust for that like every quarter we sit and move things to the different categories as they're as appropriate. Um, awesome, that's great. And then just to follow that, so in theory, in our next calendar year, when we start getting revenue, yep. um, that our um, profit loss will essentially reverse itself when it comes to some of this. It, it should, but we also, um, and I have, a, I have a note here to ask you about this. Um, it seems like some of the projections for enrollment um, income as mm -hmm. revenue is not in line with the actual number of enrollments that we get. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna look at like that, we have all the numbers for the last like six or seven years. So we're gonna average the numbers and then project out and see if we either have to increase costs or um, increase the projections so that we're more in line with what we're actually doing in the revenue. Okay, I'm definitely interested in this question. Yeah, please. <laughs> Good. <laughs> It'll be a fun topic. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was nice. We have, I mean, we have a lot of great gear down there that's in really good shape. Um, and we started getting a lot of donations of cleats and things like that that we're able to reuse. And so it's, I think there's some areas to save some money since we have these low two, two years worth of enrollments. I'm excited about the idea of level of leveling and making it self-sustaining <laughs> recreation, which I think is possible, but it does take a lot of work. Yeah. Any further discussion or comments, questions for Lisa? No? Thank you, Lisa. Brian, I guess we're into your report. All right. So first up, uh, a little discussion about 
uh, FEMA mitigation. And I also have an update based on conversations today. So uh, uh, first an introduction, this is for Rocky Road uh, in front of the Scribner Bridge. Uh, the, that area would have washed out in 2019, I believe. Uh, when, that, when that area washed out, uh, that's an area that's washed out a number of times. So we had uh, a study conducted in 2013 by Boy and King, citing that that's an area that we should conduct some uh, some mitigation work on, make some improvements so that it's not washing out all the time. Um, and the, the report is in your packet uh, that was conducted before. Um, so when we brought it to FEMA this time, uh, we asked if they would review our project for uh, mitigation and whether we would be eligible for uh, re reimbursement for not just restoring it to our road and bridge standards, but actually improving the, the site uh, with the specific uh, suggestions provided in the report that we have. They said maybe. Uh, and we've been stuck on maybe for a very long time. A lot of this was pandemic related that they weren't conducting site inspections for a long time. And then when they were conducting site inspections, they were they had a huge backlog of site inspections to conduct across the whole country. But we were stuck on maybe we'll be approved for a very long time. I was able to, to speak with them recently and I got an update on what they're looking for from us. And they want a, an, an improved engineering report that this loosely describes the project, but not to the degree that they want. Uh, they want something that has, a, they want an, an engineer's report on exactly what they're going to do in detail. It is a reimbursable cost, but it is a cost that the town will have to undertake uh, in order to receive approval. So it is possible that we would not receive approval uh, if we commissioned the study. And that's pretty much where we were at when I prepared this. Uh, today, I had a conversation uh, with the representative in FEMA in uh, a different part of their office uh, who was very interested in Kind of revisiting this report and the budget estimate uh, for that GW Taker had provided. Now, I, I reiterated to them again that we think we have enough that we're ready to commit to this project, and we have a builder who thinks they have enough that's ready to commit to this project. We'd really like to commit to this project and, and do it. Um, so they, they said they're going to take it back to mitigation for review. Uh, so it might, there are the mitigations, current requests that we provide a more detailed engineering report. We might be able to get around that and still apply for mitigation. Our other option is to forgive about mitigation, restore it to our road and bridge standards and move on. That is eligible for reimbursement. Or so yeah, the three options are we wait a little while and see if our if the current appeal that I made today gets any ground with them or not. Whether or we could do the engineering study that they've requested, or we can just restore it to our road and bridge centers. Or option four. Just not restore, it. not put it back. But that would be restoring to our no, I'm talking about uh, shutting down that road, no longer having it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we could because just eliminate it altogether. We have dealt with this. Howard, how many times is that road washed out there? Three and a half. That's over the last 50 years. So, you know, it's not Howard, I know it's more than that, but if you look at the stuff that's in there, it's, it's concrete rollers, snow rollers. Yeah. <laughs> So when was the last time snow rolling was used in this town? Well, there's one in there now. So we've thrown 
the, oh, when the, when the uh, railroad street was just the concrete when I moved here and it got all chopped up. And that's where it is. It's, it's, it's down in the, under that bridge. So, yeah. I, I think it's at least four or five times since I've been involved. Could be. And you know, every time we throw money in it, bring it back up to where it was, and then the next high water, we lose it. And we get a plan like this, and this would uh, remedy the issue, allow for a, a low yeah, water crossing. It's called, called low water crossing. And, and, and it works in New Mexico, they use it all the time. Nothing holds that, that, that ground down. Now they're work. trying to put us through the ringer to. Well, what is maddening about the whole thing is that we are trying to save the federal government money by doing this. Uh, yeah. And so they're willing to give us, what is it, $31,000 basically every time it washes out to fill it in. Something like that. It was like Some 30, $31,000. So the whole deal is we were trying to get it fixed so it wouldn't cost anything at all to put it back. And, and then they make us jump through all these hoops. Just, we were talking about that the other day. Just fill a doggone thing in and move on. I'm sick or, of fiddling with them, really. Or just shut it down so we don't have to deal with this every high water. Well, we don't want to shut that bridge down, do we? That's an option. It's uh, not a great option. No, it's not. Now, the bridge, we, we've got to do some work on the bridge. But the bridge is still sound for traffic, right? I believe so. Yeah. OK. So if it's still sound for traffic, Let's just fill that doggone hole in and get that road over. Find some big rock or something, throw them in there, and then put some gravel in there and get that road going. Take our 31,000 bucks and run. Do we have any more cement we can throw in there? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think they allow it anymore. I know a couple of guys broke and have some bodies. <laughs> I think we need to move forward. Do we have do we have right do we have cross street here on the lower cross? We do. Uh GW Tatro 130 something. Uh, something like that. 130 um, GW Tatro. Uh yeah, it is in the package. It's 105,000. 105, uh, but that's old. I was gonna say. Yeah, well we, we have an update 100. from GW Tatro that I think isn't in our packet. Uh, but yeah, they thought that this was had enough detail that they could get started on on a construction project. So I'm so I'm pushing back on yeah, hundred and five thousand is what Tatro estimated this would cost in uh, twenty eighteen. They're not committed to that or anything that it would have to go through bid like everything else, but. Uh, they thought it was that they had enough detail that they could do something with it. Um, so I push back saying that we've got a builder who thinks it's enough. I, I don't have a determination on uh, whether well, that's persuasive enough to lift the current block or not. But now, you so, said that you were just speaking to a no, guy who's split now. Um, so uh, Here's what I propose. You, we could go through mitigation. We don't know how long that's going to take. It has been a year, over a year and a half now in its current state. I think let's give it a few months to see if it goes through. If it doesn't, we can fill the hole in. See if we can get our client in here too. Yeah. Yeah. The board. I, I would agree to that, but we don't, we're not going to spend any more money on it. Right, Nat? Um, I don't think uh, we should unless the feds give us some assurance that they're going to pay us back. <laughs> I don't think we can afford it. Exactly. And I don't know why this was not completed. Enough. It, it's a comprehensive report. Maybe it is. I'd rather not wait two months. Just fill it in. Uh, I'd rather not work. just keep throwing money down the drain. But we're going to get reimbursed for that. Put it back the way it was. Most of it. Yeah. We don't get 100%. Yeah. 
We get off the whole store. Eating. So you do a lot cheaper than three old man. What's that? You can fill it back in for cheaper than three. Exactly. Well, we already filled in most of it, I think, together. Yeah, we did load that. We were 10 grand. I move that we uh, just fill it in and open that bridge back up. Motion on the floor. It's been closed long enough, and we do we, we have a second? Lacking a second, the motion will die. The motion dies. How long would it take? Like that. Do you have an estimate on how much an update is really cost or no? No. Uh, you know, I would think, I mean, I, I, I think it would be pretty reasonable to do it for 10 or less, but uh, I would have thought that, you know, 15 to 20 would have been enough for uh, the bridge study that we requested and the estimates we got for back for the bridge study were it was a couple of months ago, but what were those? Those were 20 or $30,000 for to study the bridge. So that was a lot higher than I had would have estimated. So I'm taking my engineering estimate. And so not, I guess I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so let's circle back to this. And we've, we've thrown out a bunch of options in September. Let's pursue mitigation, come back to it in September. That could be plenty of time to fill it in for the winter if you needed to. You know, why, why don't we plan on at least an update in, at the July meeting? Is there board consensus on that? Yeah, I'm good with an update. But we'll, we'll have a drop dead. Like, yeah. well, we have to make decisions. No, no, really. You, yeah. consensus. Okay, so yeah, go ahead with that plan. All right. Rail trail. So, rail trail mowing. Uh, we received a. Uh, Greg Fanage has who's done uh, some work with us for skate park. And uh, I think he's done some work around the Old Mill Park and other rec related activities. And it's been a kind of a good relationship with the town. He, he put in a, uh, a bid or a suggestion for, uh, for mowing the rail trail. You know that he thinks that he can get it done in a day that his mower can pass all of the uh, choke points that our mower can't which would save him that, that's where we're really losing time um and he provided an estimate of 520 dollars to uh, for each run of mowing the rail trip how many runs he proposal so that would be that would be up to us of how many times we want to bring it 500, you said? 520. 520. Uh, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> the uh, rail trail has asked us to mow it um, once a month during the summer, I think through October, basically, like every four to six or weeks to keep uh, the concern as ticks in the grass. Absolutely great success. It's terrific. This has not gone out for an RFP. But this was just he submitted, he submitted it. He was aware that we were struggling a little bit. Uh, we had another individual who was interested, uh, but I never got insurance information from the other individual. So the, the, it wasn't a complete. We can't hire somebody if they don't have insurance. So uh, that one wasn't complete and anything we could take action on. Uh, we can take up Greg's or we can put it up to bid or we can continue to have our public works crew do it, but it's a significant uh, investment of time and resources by our public works crew. What's the board's thoughts? Typically, that something like this would well an RFP. I have mixed feelings about it. I, I, um, I think that maybe we got our agenda items switched around and we should have discussed the Ted Alexander Welcome Center budget first, but um, okay. the, the um, I'll just throw it out. I, I feel like the rail trail asking us to do it is like, it's their responsibility, but they're now pushing that onto the towns, um, which they don't. Can 
Brown, who is the our realtor of contact, is looking into funding to help us offset the contract out. Um, he said at this point it's sort of just been something all the towns have agreed to help with, and, right. um, and so they haven't been funding you know individuals to do it. But he said if it's really posing a problem for us, that they'll look into getting some funding for us. They're not saying no, but they don't currently have any in place for that because towns have been taking it in groups, have been taking it on and right. volunteers and such. Feel like if we're going to take it on, we're kind of taking on somebody else's thing that they really, I don't even know that we have a legal ability to not motor vehicles on that. The interstate runs through your town. The town's not responsible for mowing the thing. So that's it. It's important because the thing gets mowed and we want to make sure that we have a nice trail through our town. I do think that the expenditure, you know, we're actually putting a lot of money into this trail in terms of having a trailhead facility welcome center. Rather put money into better improvement accessibility between the village, between the, uh, the business center and the rail trail, those sorts of things. So if, if we can push back against them and try and get them, I don't know, push back, maybe not the right word, but try and work with the rail trail a little more to get them to pick up the slack, that would be useful. But I, I will say that historically we have always provide the mowing for the rail trail and yes. so have the other towns. Um, it's just that the, 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 when I started uh, a few years ago, we were mowing it once a year. Yeah. And that was their original request yeah. to show community uh, support that uh, the towns would each mow their section once a year. Um, some towns on their own have taken up mowing it much more frequently. But there is the added expense and time of the guys to go out there and mow it. Um, and that's not one of our regular transportation areas to support. No, if we're, we're going to do it, we should, we should hire it out. And this is way cheaper than what these guys are capable of um, based on your equipment, not your own capabilities. But. And work a lot better too than you're talking about 25 right now. So you hear mow it once a month. So it says, I just have an email here that came in when I was over the weekend. Um, this is from Ken Brown. We haven't figured everything out yet, but Zach might be paying for some of the mowing and not the town. We need some extra paperwork. Um, so then it says Bass and the town are working to figure out who is covering which sections, and they might hire him to just do some of it. It sounds like maybe they'll split. They're working on seeing if they can split with us. For its pleasure. I think we should mow it once a year, like we have been doing in the past. You know, I get time consumption if you went to four times a year or whatever, but when the town hired the fifth public works employee, it was to alleviate hours. I know that there was discussion last year to possibly not rehire the fifth employee and hire a working foreman. But there's 2,080 extra hours there. So 16 hours four times doesn't seem to add up to that. Are you moving that? I guess my motion would be to deny and mow up once, like they have been. That's my motion. Okay, let's make a motion that would be different than what the current practice is. And what is the current practice? Current practice is twice a year. Twice a year. So your motion would be to go to once a year? Or do you want to leave it as twice a year? We could leave it as twice. I thought it was being done once. Okay. It, it was originally once a year and the last a couple of years ago, they've been asking us to do twice a year for a couple of years. And recently, last year or the year before, we agreed that, you know, we thought that at the time we had enough resources, we could start doing it twice a year. So does the board have interest in putting it out for bid or Certainly Evan's point is uh, not taking on this contract or, or only taking him on for twice a year. Not taking the contract. On. Not taking the contract on, just continuing as is. Would you take a friendly amendment to add in that the town agrees to mow once in June and once in August? So we're putting a month around it. That way if they want to contract out the other months they can. 
Or how do you feel about that, Hugh? Sorry. I don't care. Okay. Regardless, if you want me to tell me about five times a year, we'll do it. Okay. Fair. Do you want to do it once in June and once in August? I'll take that as friendly. Well, I'm not sure if you need a motion. If we're currently doing it twice a year, anyhow, then we do okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I would. Yeah. Seems like this guy can do it cheaper, well, quite a bit cheaper, if it's taking 16 hours for our guys, and eight for this guy. So are you suggesting we do the twice a year, but contract it out? Twice a year out? No. no. I don't know what I'm suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it being cheaper financially, but if you're still paying for some great hours and adding five hundred and twenty dollars, um, it's not cheaper. Um, visitor count from the rail trail or something. No, this is a lot of money is coming in and out of town. It's a lot of traffic. It's a great lot. Crappy part of the rail trail. We have the crappy part. We don't want to have the crappy. No, we don't want to have the crappy. Um, fair, but if this is one of those things where the, you know, we have a benefit to our town, but we don't have the responsibility, it sounds to me like if we're willing to do it twice a year, we're willing to split the responsibility, and we would ask the rail trail to contract out those other times. So. So how about this? Because um, I think it might make sense if we can, if we can work something out with the rail trail. So we're doing it even four times a year, but we're only doing the sections that are easy for us. That would be a pretty big difference. So that we might do it more, but if we only have to do in between the sections that we can easily reach, and then they can pay for somebody else to do the other parts of it. We'd spend as much time doing just that part as we currently spend doing the whole length. So what sections are easy and which sections are difficult? I just know that any bridge, you can't go through it. So okay. backtrack and go around on the fatigue. Which is all over. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, we have bridges all over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean. And my car currently owes some of ours for us because on the side of and Cambridge knows a little bit of ours too. Yeah. Cambridge sees that as the tire guy that yeah. Bob Muller. Because the power was the Me? Yeah, running a mower? Push your I have a push mower. The wheel mower. I got stolen. <laughs> okay. Um see if they come back with some So we're not expanding how much we're going it right now, but we'll continue to talk to the rail trail people and see if we can come up with a, an arrangement that yes. doesn't obligate us to any more work than we're currently doing. Uh, but it might shift a little bit about exactly what that work is. But Sounds good. no more hours than we're currently spending. Sounds good. Good. All right. I heard that we found bunch of money, so the Ted Access Alexander project is on. Yeah, so what happened is, um, I know this, the, uh, the prices I was getting for uh, materials was ranging between 200% and 800% of the estimate. Um, and that's all due to uh, the fact that the sawmills. And the one we are at, I mean, the, the, the construction is just all solid stuff. Um, so um, I decided for myself to just pull the plug on the project until we can figure this out. And that was on a Thursday, I think, and by Saturday or Sunday, we had, we were back in, in operation. What happened was I sat down with Matt and Brian. And we uh, hammered in the moment. We, ha we hammered on this thing. Um, and uh, then after that meeting, I went off and visited Mike Patch. And Mike took a look at the, at the list of materials I had. And he said, I got it right here. Got my shed. I got all this stuff. I said, well, can we buy some from you? He said, sure. 
and uh, we dickered about, and uh, it was he kept saying, "Ah, oh, you know, I don't want much for it. But that's much." And uh, <clears throat> I said, "Say what? We will pay you what we would have had to pay PNR, so we we'll use their prices." And he said, "Fine." So there are some. So, so all of a sudden, we had materials that are priced that we can manage. Um, he uh, he also uh, we had uh, one. Concrete guy come in, a uh, local concrete guy come in and um, bid eleven thousand eight hundred dollars for a little bit of concrete we got going on down there, and uh, uh, and Mike found a uh, took one of his one of his uh, concrete guys from Ireland. He came down with that and said, "I'd look for thirty five hundred." So guess which one we're going with on that. <laughs> Uh, and so, it, as of this morning, you and the boys dug, dug down the, 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 the points, <clears throat> and it looks great. It looks absolutely great. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if the concrete does that right now, setting the point tomorrow, tomorrow anyway, uh, setting uh, footing for us. So, we're back on track. Um, I've done a couple of minor revisions to the design, um, which I'm not even going to mention because you'll never know what they were. Um, it doesn't affect the building really at all, except it makes it a little cheaper. So I guess we're we're on we're on course. Uh, Brian Rylanitis is the is it's going to be the, the uh, car do the carpentry stuff. Uh, we're going to act as general. We have him for two weeks, so it's up to me to get all those materials in hand prior to his coming. So it's not. He's, he's got everything lined up for himself. Um, I did before before um, the uh, fecal matter hit the rotary blade. Uh, in terms of these prices, I did manage to get some pressure treated eight by eights and a few other things too. Um, so I think we're I think we're good to go to get it started. And now I'm just going to flush out the other side with Mike. Uh, good to go. Um, this is costing my time inordinately. My original plan of this whole thing was to call PNR or go down there with a list and say, here's what I want. I had the price list, you know, here's what I want. Uh, and they would say, okay, you can have this in a couple of weeks. Well, <laughs> didn't work out that way. They told me that they were going to give me anything before the middle of uh, August. And the roofing materials were going, the roofing stuff was going to come in sometime in September, which all of which blows our deadline of August 22nd. Is that right? Out of the wall. As it is, it's going to be tight, but you know, it looks like we get it done. Um, between Brian and me, we have enough, I think we have enough um, in hand to be able to finish it up. Now the question I'm sure you guys to know is how much over is this going to be? I have no idea. Brian has done. I mean, I I I refuse to get nailed down on this yet because I just don't know. We still have we still don't have all the prices in, and um, I haven't even looked for an electrician yet. Um, it's it's going to take construction industry. You want to build a porch? Go find somebody, I dare you. <laughs> um, that's the way it is. Yep. And that's why I wanted to stop the project on the building this summer and do all the other stuff. The excavation, the site work, the electrical, the water, all that. And present them with you know, an August with it's something to do. Now it's like we can't. Okay. Perfect. Anybody got any questions for Howard? What have we spent? What are we? So I see a flat $15,000 spent, but I find it hard to believe we spent exactly $15,000. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yes. That's that's what that's what we that's the money we have to work over. How much have we actually spent? 
Um, we bought, I bought, well, I don't know. I can't do this. But we have purchased very little. Or five, five eight by eights, pressure treated eight by eights. And the concrete work, uh, and I forget what that came to, it was around 4,000 bucks, I think. I think you've given me 3,500. No. Yeah, that's right. For the concrete guy, yeah. got that. And then the concrete guy is 3,500. Uh, and that may be all we've actually spent. But I gotta be careful when I do a little sawmill or something. I say, hey, here's the rest, give me. Because it would easily run it over. We have only $15,000 to spend on materials. And the one or two subs that come early in the bucket. Our, our next disbursement comes when construction begins. From the, from the family, right? But yeah. um, so where my head is at is if we're talking about Thirty five hundred for the concrete already spent, and how much were the eight by eights? The five eight by eights. Uh, I really don't. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, whatever the five eight by eights came to, you know, we're already talking. I would assume forty five. Yeah. Forty two. Forty five. Maybe. Um, and that's out of a total estimated, well, updated estimated of of fifteen or thirty thousand. I'm not sure which. I guess thirty. And but then you're talking labor of 3,500, and labor listed here is 12, 2,000. So we're definitely over on labor, right? Um, and we haven't found an electrician, so we don't have any clue if that 5,000 is close or not. Um, so you know, this is why I don't want to give you prices now. I don't want to give you an estimate because I have no idea what we're going to count. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry about that. I dearly, I know you guys want to know it. As early as you can, what we're in for here. I guess the thing that I would like to know is awesome. like, there's a lot of stuff listed here that, to your point, the building could have been optional, right? And there's probably other things here that could be optional, and which of those are optional. And we probably need to make sure we're not spending money on those things uh, until we know what our spend actually is. Oh, yeah. I believe that's the, that's the case. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to, I'm still going to try and find a, an art to work for free on the uh, but I don't know what that's going to happen. Do you know how much you're paying for lumber? No. I mean, I, no. I don't have those numbers in my head. I'm never doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 75 years old. I remember, I remember my shoes and I had to be fixed. And they're tied. And what? And they're tied. <laughs> Uh, so, right. Yeah, that's what I got. So, yeah, we've gotten a couple, a couple of our estimates here are, even from what I was able to provide on Friday, it looks like it's higher than what I estimated on Friday. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's not <clears throat> cheaper. So the estimated cost is obviously what the project kicked off at, right? Yeah. Then there's an updated cost. Is that all being covered by the allocation? No. Thank you. So the original bill of sale to the taxpayers was this wasn't going to cost them anything. It was but just going to be our donated Now time. we're talking about taking money out of the town account to finish the project. That, that's based, that's in that's, summary, that's, that's what the, the request $10, is. That's the $10,000 difference, right? It is right now. Yeah. You know, it is that to continue and finish the project as scope, we need to contribute some money to it. Uh, that not just labor that that the uh, that, that the estimate the estimates have overrun what the Alexanders are providing. So is that what the action item on this is? Is that you need approval to spend more money than allocated? Yeah, I, I guess that would be the 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 action that you could take on. on. Uh, don't didn't both Sanders and uh, ladies' offices say that this is 
Uh, Leahy's office hasn't weighed in on this, but Sanders' office is interested. Yeah. Oh, we don't. We don't have any money from them or, <laughs> or a commitment from them to provide it. Uh, they're interested. My opinion, and this is um, this is great for the community. It's not just great for the family. I just want to say that, like right up front. And I do believe it. I'm not. It's not just words. It's real. But that being said, um, the keywords you said at the end of your last statement, Brian, was per scope or um, based on the scope as is, and scope matters. And uh, I think that it's not something we plan to spend money on. We don't have extra money right now. Maybe we will, but, but we don't right now uh, if we do get federal money coming in. Um, and I would like to make sure that we're not committing to giving extra money at this point and um, you know, having a better understanding of what the financials actually are. If we're in the thick of the project, we should have a good understanding of what the financials are before we're making decisions to spend more. So is there a desire of the board to hold this within the budget? And when you've done as much as you can do, come back? I would like to, yeah. Okay. I don't know. I mean, that's that one person. If consensus of the board, or you got something for it? If the projection's already $10,000 over the budget, I don't think I'd propose pushing forward with what it is and come back to us without much. I'd try to scale back to nine or something. And then if there's a little bit needed at the end. That would be difficult, right? Right. I mean, if we scale back the design, that was the scale back design. It's not what was not what was not what was approved by the funding. And I don't know how that would figure out. I, I don't know how it would go either. Um, you know, we can make a we can submit something to them saying that the way costs are. We can't afford to complete the project as scoped. This is what we're able to do with, with a, a new updated scope. Um, or, you know, we complete as much as we can. Um, Have any of those conversations been started or had a little bit? I wanted it to go and I was talked out. I was talked about the ledge part. I wanted the funders to hear what I had to say. Mm -hmm. We had decided that, uh, Doug and I had decided that we would wait to update the funders till after this conversation with the board. Okay. You know, that we didn't want to tell them one thing and then the board decide something else and then have to change course with them. So the, the plan is to update the, the funders tomorrow. Yeah. I guess I would strongly suggest that because if they're going on with the assumption that this is going to be a done project in eight, in August, um, and we're now struggling, wondering how it's even going to be paid for, that's something they should be aware of. Well, right now, I think it, it's it's a sure thing, sure -er thing that we'll hit the deadline, you know, you know the <laughs> deadline, then they can do it for maybe not quite yet. Yeah, I, I think the I think the original estimate on this is shot. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. The way things are going today, that if you have a ten thousand dollar overage now, it could be twenty thousand before it's all done. So then a town would be on the hook for the twenty thousand. Well, what we can't go right from zero all point. We can't. We really shouldn't be. Busting right through and just keep, keep going. So, yeah, who knows? Do we have any sense at all when that when that federal stuff is determined? Uh, mm -hmm. The money from the feds? Yeah, it's, it's gonna. We we have a sense on how much we're getting, but we don't know what the rules gonna be. If it could be, we, we have some of the rules, but the rules are under appeal. So we've got a preliminary set that they're changing. Well, and 
I mean, that's assuming we want to use that money toward the shelter, which frankly, I don't know that we do. We haven't had our priority discussion. And we don't know if we can. Right. Right. Um, and we don't know if that 360,000, how much is town and how much is village? Yeah, right. I understand. We don't know anything. Right. Or very little. No good deed goes unpunished. Here we are. I guess you're looking to come out of here with some direction. I'm, I'm, I'm only here to tell you what I don't know. Okay. It's that useful. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, I'm just going to keep moving ahead. Okay. Until I hear differently and until we reach okay. a point where we're just playing out of money. So you said that the no. next book, just I'll only have one more question. You said that the next tranche is uh, when Brian starts? Uh, in our contract is when construction starts. And since you've got the concrete guy out there, I think that's construction starting. So we can request the next segment. Well, that would be helpful. Um, but I think the direction we need from the board is, are we rescoping the project to fit under the estimated budget or are we, uh, and offering to make up the difference. Yeah. We have to take the temperature of the Alexanders and see what their preference is. If, I mean, our, our options at this point are, because we don't have enough information just to continue going ahead, and just building until we're out of money. Um, we don't have the money for it now and we don't have, we don't know how much it's gonna cost. We don't know how far we can get. Are we just gonna leave a construction project that finished and built? Does it make sense? So we have to ask the Alexanders, are they okay with delaying a year? So maybe prices will come down. As Howard has said to me before, you know, if you wait longer, you can often get better prices. And, and I've always been able to trade time for money. I've um, never known it to not work. So there's that. Is that acceptable to, to the Alexanders? Can we delay a year? Do we get it to a certain point, certain you know, point this year for the Alexanders so that they can have their memorial and their dedication on the 22nd because they've got a lot of family planning them coming in for that from far away. And we don't even know if they'll be able to do that because they're coming from Canada, some of them. Um, so what are the Alexander, or do the Alexanders want to say, not too bad, uh, we don't want to send you any more money and they might even want us to send the money that they sent us back because we're not doing the project um, in accordance with the contract that, that we signed with them. Now it's for COVID reasons. I think we do have that out in the contract. We would have to have a discussion around that, but I don't think we could do anything more until we get a sense from the Alexanders of what they're willing to, how they're willing to work with us. I would feel better about that. You want to challenge the then presents itself is if they do want to move forward. Um, we don't have a next, our next meeting is not until the 19th of July, which is almost a month, almost exactly a month before the deadline for completion. But well, we can't, not, I think we're not completing this this year. I would tend to agree with you. I, I think that's just the reality in for. Are we to say that? Uh, our next full. For me. Will not be until July 19th. So, so we're saying to the Alexanders, saying we need to make a decision. We're saying to the Alexanders, we can't do, we can't go with plan A. It's off the table. Um, well, we have thirty thousand bucks by then, and have, and and I'll just keep going. We'll, we'll make an estimate. No. Will the the as I understand our direction. Our next step is to talk to the Alexanders and find out what kind of take their temperature of what their comfort level is with us making changes to the project. Um, but and that's before we spend. I mean, we were already committed to the the concrete, so that guy will be out either now or or in the morning. We will go to the Alexanders. We'll take the temperature of what their comfort level is with us changing the scope of the project 
and resizing it. Um, we talked a little bit about resizing this, so we, we have a design, not a full design, but a discussion already with uh, where this might, we might be able to cut this off. Um, we'll find out what the Alexander's comfort level is uh, before we request the next segment of money, if their comfort level is, if, if they're comfortable with this, we'll request the next segment of money from the Alexander's and we'll proceed with construction up to that kind of truncated uh, segment of the, the mobile center. That sounds fine, but if we don't know, we have to know what materials are going to cost and that we can get them. And if we don't know that, we can't commit to that second stroke. Like that's important. So that's you and us will get with Mike Patch and, and have a final number of we think that we can do the truncated one for within our budget. Let's make sure that we actually can. Yeah. You never know. They might be so committed to this that they want it the way it is and be willing to kick in the extra to make it happen. Yeah, you know, we don't know that. We don't know that, so find out. To best point, still need to know the exact amount of material to go right. back to them. Right. Yeah. Okay. I guess we have some consensus, at least. Yeah. Limited move forward, talk to the Alexanders. I'm sure this is the back before us again. Okay. Uh, Thanks for all your work. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, we're a little over 15 minutes behind schedule. So just awareness. The Mall Sheriff's contract. All right. You have with you the proposed uh, annual sheriff's contract for. Uh, communications and control. The contracts are for the amount as approved in our budget. Right? Yes. There are duplicate pages in here. Uh, when I photocopied or when I scanned the whole thing for a packet, uh, it also includes. He gives us a copy for our records and a copy to send back to him. And when I scanned it, I, I included both copies. So there's an extra set for each company. Well, why don't we take up the easy one first, the communication budget? Motion to approve. And motion. We have second. Second. Motion. Second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor, say by saying aye. 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 So, do you have a copy for us to sign? Yes, I do. We want to send that down through. And what's? I guess I would look for a motion first to approve the controls contract. And we may have some discussion. So I'll move Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Do motion? Do we have a second? Second. Motion second. I guess I will turn it over to Matt. I'm sure he's got some information to provide. Yeah, so Beth and I are talking. We've got a, that's a regular meeting now with uh, Sue Bartlett, the Pine Park Select Board, Linda Martin, uh, Linda Martin. Uh, Select board talking about what our options are moving forward on law enforcement. Um, where we are right now, um, this contract hasn't been really looked over and updated and, you know, since I've been here, um, and probably for double or triple that amount of time. So we think we'd really like to spend some time, that group would like to spend some time this summer looking over, updating. The contract, making it more current, um, more relevant, um, more specific, and um, uh, and then send it out for legal review. Just the three towns, so we're sharing that cost. 
Um, in the meantime, we're happy to recommend signing this contract with one suggested change that I, that woke up is going to get to us. Woke up wants a change for this particular contract, which includes language along the lines of you know, each each contract town will receive patrol office patrol hours in proportion with the amount of money that they spend on the contract. So in other words, Johnson, we're 42% of the contract, so we would get 42% of the hours. Uh, Wolka is 20% of the contract, so they'd get 20% of the hours, Hyde Park 38%. Um, so I haven't gotten that specific language yet. I talked to Roger about it. He was like, yeah, that sounds fine. Uh, I think devil's in the details. So long story short, I think that because you know we're not gonna have another meeting until um, before the current contract runs out, we should sign the contract as it is with the knowledge that we might update it in a few weeks with we'll get the suggestion that you know we, we put in proportion of hours spent each time. Any other does that make sense and does that change that makes a lot of sense actually. Approve, work with everyone all right yeah not all those in favor seem folks like saying aye aye opposed well we're on that you want to also do the nims yep uh, we have also received uh the Nems contract for, for Angela service. Uh, that's as budgeted in our yep. by the vote. What's, what's the board's pleasure? With respect to Nims contract. It's the same what we agreed to it's the budgeted yes. amount. Yep. Motion to approve. Do we have motion? Do we have second? Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Let's have it. Okay, I guess uh, we're on to the Worcester Assessor. Yeah, there's another one. We've got a copy for our records and a copy of this one. Was that uh, chair? Yeah, that's chair only. Okay, that's patrol. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a designated okay. member. Um, I would. So I want to provide a little update on uh, where we're at with the uh, listers and assessors. Um, our contract with Nemric is expiring, and uh, Nemric has declined to uh, has declined to renew our our contract. Um, so we are searching for um, searching for a replacement. Uh, that has we've had a couple of leads on this working with. Uh, the listers in Morrisville, uh, working with uh, partnering with other towns to uh, get you know get a few towns together and create a full time position by sharing that you know the, the hours between several towns uh, that has not borne any fruit yet, um, and we're getting up towards that we're we're going to be in a hard spot. If we, uh, can't secure somebody. Um, so it's more just providing the, the board an update. I was hoping to have something that you could take action on today, but I, I don't. I don't, I don't have a. I don't have an offer from anybody. I'm hoping to have one soon, but yeah, you know, we're really in a bind. Um, we're between a rock and a hard place. So what happens if we don't find someone? 
So we wouldn't be the only one in that situation. So I'm sure the, the league, we can put out an RFP and see what we get proposals. We can't be the only community in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had, I had plans for this and, it, and they, at, at every stage, uh, has not been successful. So that's, I mean, that's something we, we have to have and have, have it on board ASAP. Yes. We're not sure if Robin will be able to do the administrative yet, right? That's, I would hope so, uh, but I don't have, I don't have a specific offer from anyone right now to. Okay. Do you think she'd be interested in doing it if we provided somebody to do visits with her, do site visits with her? I think that's more likely. Um, you know, I, I think we're getting close to discussing work conditions and job interview and other things in open session that we, you know, that we probably shouldn't discuss in open session. Um, but yeah, I, I have everything I've tried so far has fallen through. I'm not completely exhausted on this. But uh, it, it doesn't look good because we're coming up on the end of the year. And as of July 1st, we no longer have uh, NIMIC's contract in yes. place for any assessing work. However, they will honor any appeals to the VCA. Yes, they, they will fulfill their obligation to do, defend the, the work that they have submitted while under contract. Uh, there's a, it looks like we might have to pay for some additional expertise that they'd like to bring, that they might like to bring, uh, but we'll work out some of those specifics. I think it's okay. closer to the BCA. So no action for tonight. It's a informational. It's, it's, I would have hoped that we'd have something, so that, yeah, I don't have it. I don't have anything actionable tonight. Um, when would we go out for RFP? I would, I guess that's a good action that we could take. I would like the board's uh, permission to write an RFP. I'm going to base it on uh, Hyde Park just had an RFP that they took out recently. And I think it's Berlin uh, or Barry that also had uh, an RFP out recently. So I'm going to take. I'm going to write an RFP based on what some other towns have put out recently okay. uh, and circulate that. So I, I guess I would like the board's permission to put out an RFP uh, that you haven't had a chance to read yet. So did the board entertain a motion authorizing Brian to put out an RFP for assessment? So second. We have motion second. Any discussion? None. All those favor, same five saying aye. 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 Uh, before we move on, I'd like to circle back to NIMS contract. We had a motion and a second authorizing it. Could I ask for a new motion that would identify authorizing the chair to sign it? It was only requiring the chair to sign it. So motion authorizing the chair to sign the NIMS contract. We have a second. 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 Any other discussion? All those in favor, six five saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye, sir. Thank you. Especially since I already signed it. Uh, American, Everybody didn't even know. American Rescue Plan. So we had a little discussion about this. The, uh, we can now submit a request for uh, disbursement of the first part of the ARPA funds. Um, I can submit the survey for that and do the paperwork for it, but it, the board has to ask me to do that. Please do that. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Second. Deliver that. Please motion. Second, <laughs> please. Do we have any other discussion? None. All those in favor saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nothing for us to sign, right? No, no. I, I, I should be able to submit everything online, but we got to a section where Go forward. It wanted kind of a 
specific authorization to do it. So that's it. Um, we'll have a priority. We'll have a discussion more about priorities and what we want to spend these on and what we're allowed to spend them on in the future. But okay. uh, we have a long meeting tonight, so for now, it's we'll request the money and uh, better to have it and then figure out what to do with it. Fireworks permit. So we have received a uh, fireworks permit. Uh, for the 4th of July celebration. It will actually be conducted on the 3rd of July uh, on Route 100C uh, outside the village. Uh, they've informed their neighbors. Uh, they've completed everything on the, on the permit application. Board of Pleasure. Approve, approve with conditions or deny. That's the same one that was last year. I believe it is the same family that was last year. Uh, if there were any, it might have been, you know, along the lines of check weather conditions, you know, and fire risk on the day of, you know, what would be kind of the only, I don't remember specifically, but that would be the only recommendation that I would suggest is, you know, check fire conditions on the day of and make sure they haven't changed. Motion to approve the permit. Do the authorized city troop. The what? Um, it needs one person to be authorized to sign on behalf of the board. I'm also to approve the permit with the board, with the chair authorizing the authorized signature. We have motion, we have a second. Did you have the stipulation for the letter? You had the stipulation. Well, I didn't have a stipulation for the letter, but I didn't, so you'd have to. So you're moving. So put the stipulation on based on the weather conditions. Okay, we have a motion. Accepting with the one added condition, do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Don't need discussion. Hearing none, all those, uh, all those in favor seem like saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay? No. Nice no. no, have it. Do you have a copy? Did you say no, yeah? It is. You have to do a roll call. Okay. No, I don't know if it's in person. Uh, do you have a copy for you to sign? Yes. Uh, let's, I'll have you sign the one that I've got in my office that's got the check and everything okay. with it. So we'll see. Uh, okay. Fireworks, first review of the updated speed limit ordinance. So uh, our existing speed limit ordinance is in your packet. It is, it would be nice if they could stay this simple. Um, <laughs> Our existing speed limit ordinance is uh, one page and uh, yeah, it has a pretty straightforward layout. Uh, this really isn't the format that they want uh, speed limit ordinance or traffic control ordinances in anymore. So I would first pass at an updated uh, ordinance. So there's gonna be two parts to this discussion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk specifically just about the speed limit right now. And then there'll be a broader discussion. So speed limit ordinance here is written in kind of the more modern standard where it lays out all of our roads that have designated speed limits. Mm -hmm. uh, I started by assessing every speed limit sign we have and using that as a basis for uh, determining that that road has a designated speed limit. Um, there is some precedence for establishing speed limits based on historical use, um, but changing a speed limit, we need to have uh, data to back up that the, the road conditions and the safety requires a speed limit change. Uh, we do have one location where we have data to support a speed limit change, and that is on Sinclair Road. The segment of Sinclair between 
uh, Route 100 C and Rocky Road, we have a speed limit study in that area that suggests that it could be lowered safely to 25 miles per hour instead of 35 miles per hour as it is right now. Otherwise, all the speed limits are unchanged. This is just the modern format. Um, I haven't had a chance to run it by Roger yet, but I, would, I do want to run it by the sheriff to make sure that he's comfortable with this. Um, and that could be our new speed limit ordinance. Of note, uh, Hogback Road does not have any speed limit signs on it in the town limits of Johnson. Uh, I don't think that we meant that to be a 50 mile an hour road. I don't think that it supports being a 50 mile an hour road. So I suggest that we do a speed limit study on Hogback. Uh, so I, with the board's permission, I'm going to put the request into LCPC uh, for such a study. And, then I'll be able to update with what the recommended speed limit is for Hogback. And then we should sign it. Uh, we're also missing a speed limit sign on River Road East, uh, which we'll replace. It might be good also to just find out what uh, Cambridge has for its uh, 40 miles per hour. They have 40. Yep. Okay. okay, good. So I'm assuming that's probably what we're going to get. Yep. Uh, we might get 35. Uh, the, the standard is that it's the uh, 85th percentile of traffic on the road is the recommended speed limit. We can make some modifications based on school districts and other things, but um, to, to lower a speed limit, we would have to demonstrate that it's either unsafe at that speed or that people are not driving that speed. You know that people recognize it's unsafe at that speed. So the reason there are no accidents is that nobody drives at speed limit. Everybody drives lower than that. I'm expecting Hogback to come in about 35, 40 miles an hour. It might be a little bit faster than that. Uh, but again, being on that road, there's enough houses there. It's tight enough. There's enough turns. I don't think it supports being a 50 mile an hour road. I think that it's going to come in about 35, 40 miles an hour because that feels safe when you're driving on that road. But we've got to have data to back up. Uh, we can't just set speed limits, whatever we want to do. That's too bad we just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's quite obvious somebody's going to be driving out of back road 50 miles an hour. Yeah. And some of those corners. I, I will point out that LCPC provides these speed studies for us at no charge. So. That's good. Uh, yeah, this is conducting the study isn't obligating us for any cost. Good. I would just hope that you know, maybe it does come out where we could set it at the uh, same as Cambridge. So you don't have a speed limit change in the middle of that road somewhere because that's that's where you feel like speed traps. We'll, we will probably set up a couple different uh, sample points on that road because it, the length of the road, uh, like when you're up right near Ithiel Falls and you're near the camp and you're in that first section where there's a lot of houses there, that really doesn't feel the same as when you get past the falls and you're just going past the... the yeah, by the border. Yeah, yeah. Uh, up near the, like the Ithiel Falls storage, uh, up to, towards, towards the border with Cambridge, it's really... The road widens a little bit. There's kind of nothing on either side of you. You're going to be going faster in that segment. So we want we don't want that to be our sample for what the speed limit should be. You know, near the homes. Yep. So we'll we'll get a couple sample locations when we're determining the speed limit for that road. All right. Who's the signature on 2002. So who is it? It, no, I, that's Howard. That's Howard. Okay. Um, but I believe this this ordinance was just a, adopted so that we could have the tickets written on state highways, and then uh, right. they can select the municipal uh, option, so we get reimbursed for it. Yeah, and that that's why this one is very simple. It didn't take into account all these other town highways. It was only to deal with the state highways. 
How was that from memory 20 years ago? So, don't the, ask me my name. <laughs> I was going to say, it's pretty good to remember that. Okay, well, I already had a great shoes on. So, the other part of the conversation is we also have on our wish list um, some other traffic control ordinance updates, like our, our speed limit, or not just our speed limit, but like our stop sign and yield signs uh, and uh, traffic control signs in general. And the stop sign ordinance has been on the fast track. Yeah. yeah. The modern <laughs> for the last 30 years. <laughs> The modern suggestion for how to write ordinances like this is to write a singular traffic control ordinance. That's the model that VTrans provides for a new ordinance to control. Any of these is one ordinance that does traffic control and all aspects of traffic control and parking and, and, and all that regulation. Um, it will delay providing our update to our speed limit ordinance. The work on the speed limit ordinance is basically done. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of what's the board's pleasure? Do we want to keep the way we've been doing it where there's separate ordinances that will allow us to get this one passed relatively soon. Um, we've been this way for 20 years. If another six months it takes to draft up the rest of the items. I don't think it'll be six months, but it will be a couple months. Uh, okay. But I'm going to do my best to not let it get into budget season where it falls to the back burner again. And I think uh, what Roger is really going to encourage is that we pass this along to Hyde Park and we'll get to mirror it. So he, it's real easy for their uh, deputies if the ordinances are all the same. Yeah. I, I didn't look at theirs to see exactly how it was, but I did. Uh, Follow up with Stowe and yep. some conversations with, with them. So we're not, I didn't look at our partner organizations with the sheriff's department, but I have looked at other local ordinances and they're pretty similar. Okay. I, I think I think anybody who's adopting a new ordinance is adopting the model that we try to provide. Okay. Anything else? The only feedback I have, Brian, is I mean, we should try to format it so it fits on two pages. Like reduce margins and font, and all that. I think it can fit on two pages. Until we make all the additions. Until we add a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, that's true. No, um, but yeah, we could we could decrease some of the we could decrease the overall font size definitely. Um, I like using some of the pre-formatted headings because it makes it easier to okay. track sections. Um, uh, the electronic. I got you. That's yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we can definitely tighten it up a little bit. Um, all right. Next up COVID 19 reopening. Okay. COVID 19 reopening information. So, uh, town offices have reopened. Um, we're the recommendations that anybody who's not received the vaccine should wear a mask, uh, whether they're here or anywhere else. But uh, our offices have, have reopened and are serving the public again. Um, I, as I understand it, Rosemary, we are going to be keep. We're going to continue to do uh, uh, land record searches by appointment. Uh, just Even if they call from the car, you know. Yeah. Just to make sure there's nobody else. Just so you have limited yeah, people in small space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and that's also, it's for health reasons, but it's also just for, uh, I don't know if you've ever been in there when we had multiple attorneys all trying to do <laughs> land record searches. We're just, we're not, we're not that big of an office. We don't have that much space for them to work at. If anybody else needs a conference room table or anything else, like, or something out of the vault, like, we just can't support that many people doing that job at the same time. So it's less, it has not been a major inconvenience for us to do it so far. Uh, we're just gonna keep doing it by appointment. And like Rosemary said, you know, th there's no, you don't have to request it at some number, some particular time in advance, just uh, we're gonna put a limit on how many people are doing that task at the same time. And it'll be better for them also. 
have to spend as long trying to fight for, you know, space in the vault or trying to draw them from the same book or whatever. So it, it should work out. There shouldn't be any major change there. But, um, public works employees, everything is open. You know, it's the same. If you're not vaccinated, it's recommended that you wear a mask. Um, the other thing I want to talk about what is a little bit about Zoom. Uh, so two things. Uh, the first is um, paying for Zoom. I think that we we adopted this and paid for it out of our emergency fund. Going forward, I think it's a cost that we should consider sharing with the village uh, because it gets something that we both use and it'll be something that's worth maintaining in the future. Uh, just because this is a lot easier to use than a conference call. Um, you know, when we tried to have people who needed to call in for one reason or another, it was difficult for them to participate. It was difficult for us to hear them. This is a better system than that, regardless of all the particulars about how we use Zoom in the future. I think it's worth keeping, but I would recommend that we drop the uh, additional users, that we only needed that a couple times uh, and it's quite expensive. And now that we can meet in person, most people will be meeting in person. So I think that going back to the you know maximum of 50 users at a time is not going to be our tip uh, under any circumstances. Um, and also be my recommendation that uh, for our meetings, it would be broadcast only and not uh, participating by Zoom unless there's special circumstances. Yeah. So that's the, the next part, is how we use Zoom in our regular meetings. We've gotten advice from the League of Cities and Towns that suggests that they think we're kind of not in good order if we don't allow comment by Zoom at our meetings. I think that they're wrong about that. That's, that, that's either a misinterpretation or an overly cautious opinion. I think that Zoom should be, we should be able to regard Zoom as being very similar to broadcast television. I don't think that that discussion is, the League of Cities and Towns is great, but anytime we get into like a more complicated discussion, they're gonna say, talk to your town. That they're not gonna give us an opinion that could land us in court sometimes. So I think that it's worth bringing up to our town attorney to make sure that we're not actually on thin water and that our interpretation is Fair. I think it is, but I'd like to take it to the town's attorney uh, to get a determination. And if the town attorney does agree with the league, then it would be a decision of the board on whether we just stop broadcasting on Zoom completely or we would have to start allowing participation via Zoom. But the emergency management team did meet today and this was our final meeting and we didn't remove any town restrictions. So there's no additional restrictions anymore. I guess that's more of a informational thing. Yeah. And if our yeah. attorney gives us some information that, uh, like I say, agrees with the league, then we probably would need to take that up as a discussion. But I think going forward, we'll plan on Zoom uh, only be reviewing and not participation unless there's certain special circumstances where a board member is unable to attend, they can zoom in, or if there's someone who's health bound and can't participate, but they're wishing to uh, come before the board, then we could use Zoom. But otherwise, it would not be a normal practice. No, I think it's worth continuing to pay for it. Yes. It's a useful tool, even if we don't use it in the same way. Sorry, Matt, go ahead. Oh, uh, just another informational thing. We'll have a, uh, we're planning, the state's planning on having a, a uh, vaccination clinic at Tuesday Night Live on July 6th. So uh, we're, we've got that in the works and I don't think it's 100% yet, but we're working on it. Uh, before we do go into executive session items, I did want to just advise the board that uh, the box elder large tree 
on the border of my property in the town fell down during the wind today and landed on one of the arboretum trees. <laughs> <laughs> it's <a> funny. That <laughs> is awful. <laughs> that's that's an order. That's Sorry. Beth Floyd is laughing. The rest of the board was taking it very seriously. Um, um, I did no, that's call. That's really awful. Are you paying for the? It's clearly a tree. Yeah, it's clearly it's tree. tree. <laughs> it was. It is now. It was a, between the town and the village, or the town and myself. I'm sorry. Um, your tree. Just the top of it rushed down onto one of the arboretum trees, and it did collapse the fence. But the tree itself is, looks like it's going to be fine. But I did call Sue Lovering and give her a heads up. Come after me. Uh, uh, we had one more ad for public session. Oh, the lease on the Hocum House, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, the current lease, uh, the current lease does have a provision that allows us to end it at any time with 30 days notice. Oh, it does currently? Uh, there are no changes needed to the lease. Oh, good. So I seek the board's permission to, to resign the lease. It's the board's pleasure in authorizing you to sign it, correct? Yep. So moved. The motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion, second. Any discussion? Did we decide to bump the rent at all this year? Uh, we have not yet. So what's in the what's in the lease? It's a per level. Just it's do you want to make any adjustment to the lease? That would require amending the I'm, not asking, I'm not asking for it. I was just wondering if that's what what, what are, what's the current rent? Unfortunately, to set up. Zoom up here. I had to pull my computer off of our file network. Oh, okay. So I think it's eleven hundred. Well, I can't. Okay. It's on our yeah. secure network. Yeah, no, just... A month. Is that a reasonable rent? It's That's yeah. It's a little on the low side, but mm, I don't think so. Well, I mean, well, I share with you my daughter. It's. It is my daughter is paying about the same for a bigger apartment than that is. We'll leave it the way it is. Okay. We we do have a motion on the floor. I'll raise a Brian to sign with a second any other discussion. See, hearing none, all those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed. Can I say it? There was one other item, the planning section, talking about setting up a yes, planning session. Planning session. Uh, Maybe you want to elaborate on what you're thinking. Um, yeah, I was thinking that we, back in April, maybe it was, we were talking about the list of projects that we have out there and talking about prioritizing those projects as a team um, and you know potentially adding other items too. And I'm just hoping we can get something on the calendar and start talking about um, you know what's most important to the board. It's 66 there already. We don't need that anymore. Well, maybe we get rid of some. Yeah, get rid of some. We can box some of that. Um, at least uh, preliminarily, for the board entertaining our working session in August, we dedicated planning commission uh, session, and we at some point need to revisit the whole capital equipment uh, fund. We did not finish on that. Yeah, but I'm not sure if we could. That would be a huge undertaking, both of them in one meeting, but um, possibly doing that if you do not add anything else. Let's do it that way. We'll try to limit it to just those two items. So we'll, we'll look at that and see if we can do it. Okay. And, and then if there's anything, I mean, just to go along with that, I guess, if there's anything on that full list of projects or yet out there, that we get information from one of our committees or commissions, like Brian, if we could reach out to those committees or commissions to get their feedback in advance of that August meeting, that would be helpful. All right, I will, I, will, I think what I'll try and do is circulate our list and then, and then if board members can write me and let me know if you have more questions about it, I'll just okay. start gathering documents. I'll call you after I get the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is all the items I show added on. I 
Our agenda has two additional personnel issues that are going into executive session. Unless there's any comments from the public or any board member comments. No. You're going to stay? I just want to recognize you, Mike. Period. You look like Santa Claus. You should have seen, you should have seen it when, it was, jolly when, when it was really big. I tripped there. You want to stop there? Yeah. Okay. And your voice is very familiar to me. <laughs> sure it is. <laughs> oh, I don't remember yeah. placards. I don't know your name. Beth no, Boy and Abbott it used to be Hill. Yeah, right. yeah. Emory Hill. Oh, okay. yeah. Emory Hill is very nice. Very good. Very good. That's Rosemary. Emory Emory Hill Hill is Rosemary. Rosemary. I thought you retired. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You had a lot of You was a baby. I was a Yes, He was a heroin. Not well. officially yet. Yeah. And you are. Yeah. You did for us. The um, Yeah, you remember. You probably remember me from school, from high school, is my guess. I don't have you as a teacher, but. No, it was trouble. I can't. It might have been a little trouble. <laughs> and Mr. Patty. I thought so. I don't know. We've never really talked. No, no. Right. Okay, so you're Mr. Brian Storm. Yes. Uh, oh, good things I thought. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to have to talk sometime. Okay. So, I have only one complaint. Either I'm so damn old, but you got to speak louder. We gotta speak louder. You never had any trouble hearing me when I talk. No, we don't. So, all right. Can you hear me, Dick? Yes, you're as bad as I am. <laughs> Good to see you tonight. Good to see you. Glad you came. Thanks for coming. You'll see yeah. me in other meetings. Good. Okay, you're welcome anytime. Proof that we've gone into executive session to discuss the personnel issue on the left by one BSA 313A3. Will there be any invited guests? I don't know. Uh, how about Brian and Rosemary? Is that accurate? And uh, you. Thank you. And you. No. Mark wasn't here for his evaluation. Well, I guess you're right. We should. We will meet in executive session without you and then invite you. Did I read the, which one did I read? Yeah, I know. I think you can make sure the two of them together. I said, I said, <laughs> just a disciplinary action. I meant personnel. Um, Oops. Evaluation of personnel as of last night, one of the SA 313. Okay, that's so we motion. have a motion on the floor. Second. Inviting Brian and Rosemary, and probably at some point inviting Hume into the meeting. Second. Yep. Any, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So it's an executive aye. session at 924.